Hey what's up guys, it's Darkroom Duels and today I'm going to be doing a Blackwing deck profile. Now this deck is probably the deck that I am most well known for on YouTube because it's absolutely my favorite deck of all time. With being able to have so much support this deck has had and all the different cards, I, I don't know if you can tell, I even have a first edition uh, Ghost Rare Blackwing Dragon, which you guys should give me a like just for that and be sure to subscribe just for that. It's a really awesome card that you can actually finally summon this deck thanks to the legendary Duelist 3 White Dragon Abyss uh, support that we got. Um, this deck is just at a whole new level that you actually have to stop and think about your combos that you're going to be doing in this deck. It's so much fun to play this deck. So without further ado, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell in there so you can become a part of the notification squad, and let's get straight on into this deck. So we're going to be playing first off three copies of Simo the Poison Wind. Uh, Simo the Poison Wind's effect is that uh, if you have no monsters, you can special summon, you can banish a uh, Blackwing monster from your hand and then place a Black Whirlwind face up from your deck on your side of the field and then send this card to the graveyard or immediately after this card resolves, normal summon it without tributing. That's what I always do because I just instantly normal summon it and then search out of my deck the. Um, the Oster, the South Wind, so I can go into full Armor Master really easily. Um, it also has the ability that you can only use its effect once per turn, and then during the end phase, send the Black Whirlwind to the graveyard, and if you do, you take a thousand points of damage. Not a big deal, because you're usually going to OTK your opponent the turn you activate this ability anyways. Um, then I play two copies of Chris, uh, the Crack of Dawn. Um, this card special summons itself from the hand if you control another Blackwing monster other than itself. Um, and then once per turn, you cannot, uh, it cannot be destroyed by spell or traps. Now, I actually bumped this down to two because it felt like a, just a normal summon, an additional normal summon in my deck. Yes, it's way up high on the ladder, but there's a couple of cards that I played instead of this just to be able to, um go for more extensions of my place. And you can only special summon this once per turn anyways, and it's hard to search because it's a 1900 beater. You want to draw it, um, but you don't want to search it. So then I play three copies of Bora the Spear. Uh, Bora the Spear is basically just special summon it from your hand and inflicts piercing damage. Um, that's his big gimmick. Um, then I play one copy of Zaphros the Elite. No, you are not missing that. That is a German first edition Zaphros the Elite that I got from a good friend of mine a long time ago. Um, basically, Zaphros the Elite's effect is, and if you don't read German, is you get to uh, put a card. If it's in your graveyard, you can pull a card from your side of the field and put it back into your hand. And then after you put a card back in your hand, you take 400 damage and then special summon in from your graveyard, but you can only activate, activate the effect of Zaphros the Elite once per duel. Now, the cool combo is, is if you can have him in the grave and have Simo on the field, you can bounce out during your main phase. After you get all your searches off the Whirlwind, bounce the Whirlwind to your hand, and then you don't take the damage and you get to keep the Whirlwind, which is really nice. Um, then I play only one copy of Kalut the Moonshadow. I've kind of bumped it down because I because Armor Master, full Armor Master, which is the main monster we're going for, does not actually, he is completely unaffected by card effects, so you really only need the one Kalut for the off chance that you're going to search it off of the normal summon. It's a little awkward to search anyways because it has 1400, so that's why I just play one copy of it now. You could probably get away with two. Um, if you guys feel really strong about it, play three. That's up to you. I just play the one copy of it right now. Um, then I play three copies of Gale of the Whirlwind. Um, Gale of the Whirlwind basically lets you special summon itself out from the deck by just, um, or just, if you have another Blackwing on your side of the field, you can special summon it from your hand, and then once per turn, you can half the attack and defense of one face-up monster your opponent controls, which is just an absolutely crazy effect, and I absolutely love the effect of Gale of the Whirlwind. It's probably what inspired me to actually play the deck to begin with, because everybody back when I was just getting into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, everybody was playing this as the tuner of their deck, uh, which has been a long time ago. Um, but I've been playing for like 16 years in this game. I've been playing since I was 6 years old. Um, but I kind of took a break and didn't really play any tournaments or anything. I just kind of collected. Um, so then I play um, three copies of Oster the Southwind. Now I know some people will only play um, one copy or maybe two copies of this. I think three is the optimal number. I know it's searchable off of your Blackwing um, Simo, but I like to play the uh, two co or three copies of it. Now you could probably drop one copy and play a Vayu if you wanted to play Vayu. I don't play Vayu in my particular build um, because I just don't feel like it's needed right now. When we get um, Needle Fiber, you might play it at one, but I just like playing the three um, 
Oster. But its effect is is that when it, it cannot be special summon, and when it's normal summon, you can target one of your banished level 4 or lower Blackwing monsters, which you have to banish them for cost off of his effect anyways. So you summon him, search this, normal summon this, and then you get to uh, target the Blackwing that you banished for the cost of him, and then you get to special summon it. Then this gains an additional effect by banishing it from the graveyard. You can either place a black feather counters on one black wing dragon equal to the number of cards your opponent controls or place one wedge counter on each face up monster your opponent controls that does not have one, which can allow you to take control of your opponent's monsters or destroy them with full armor master. Then I play two copies of um, Blizzard the Far North. Um, I play two copies of it because it lets me revive black wings from the grave to just extend my synchro plays and all sorts of stuff like that i play one copy of pinaka because it can let me climb the ladder all the way back up and sometimes i need to get my simo it's like playing a fourth simo it's a little slow but i think one copy of it because during the end phase it has the skarm effect that'll let you add any black wing from your deck to your hand um and also it's a level three tuner monster anyways i play one copy of breeze the zephyr um, Breeze the Zephyr is a good one of in this deck, because if it's added to your hand by the effect of a spell trap or monster card, you can special summon it immediately from your hand. It's kind of a dead draw, but we play Allure of Darkness, so we can banish it if we don't need it. Um, one copy of Steam the Cloak. Um, Steam the Cloak's here because it gives us tokens and it just reoccurs itself and keeps giving you tokens over and over again every time it's removed from the field. One copy of Gallus the Midnight Stun. I cannot emphasize how important this card is. It is one of because if you use this and you have just one Black Wing on the field, you can instantly special summon it. Um, and then if you special summon it on the field, it's used for Link fodder or being able to um, X Y Z summon or not X Y Z summon uh, Synchro summon. Then I play two copies of Hamat in the Dust. Um, Hamat in the Dust is a level modulator monster that allows you to change its particular level for um, any situation. Um, if you target, like, for instance, let's say I have, I special summon Hamat in the Dust, because you can only special summon it once per turn, and I have Blackwing Oster on the field. I target Oster, make this card level 6, because it gains the levels, and then I can synchro these two away and summon Full Armor Master like that. Like, it's really easy to um, summon. And then for the last two cards I play for monsters, I play some hand traps, but I'll show you those in just a second, is two um, Orsha the Squall. Orsha the Squall is here because you can special summon it directly from your hand, and then it's level 1 tuner. And it extends our plays being able to go into stuff like um, the uh, Rain Sprinkle. I think it's called Rain Sprinkle. The um, Rainstorm. Um, so, Senyohai, the Rainstorm, it allows us to go into that. And with a Simo, you can go into level 7 Synchro plays as well. So, like I said, a lot of monsters, but let's get into the hand traps really quick, and then we'll get into the extra, or the uh, spells and traps, which we don't play quite that many spells and traps. It's mainly monsters. I don't know if you can tell. Um, so we play three copies of Ash Blossom. That's the only three hand traps I play in this deck. You don't, you, you need the hand traps, but you don't need the hand traps. Like, they're nice to have, but they kind of clog because you can't keep extending with them. I've thought about dropping them in the deck, but I keep playing them because I want to play them. Um, so if you want to play like Effect Veiler, play Effect Veiler, you want to play Ghost Ogre, play Ghost Ogre, just play any hand trap you want in this position, or if you don't want to play hand traps, play like Vayu, the third Chris, and some other Blackwing that you want to play. Maybe, um, I don't know, a Panaka or something. I don't know. I like this. I like to play the Ash Blossoms, though. So... The next cards that we play is three copies of Allure of Darkness. You need the three Allure of Darkness in the deck because the Allure of Darknesses just extend your plays, being able to draw so many more cards and be able to dig into your deck deeper. Three Call by the Graves because Call by the Grave just allows us to not be hand trapped, and that's really important. Um, and then three copies of Black Whirlwind. Black Whirlwind's effect is that you get to, every time a Blackwing monster is normal summoned to your side of the field, you get to add a Blackwing monster from your deck to the hand that has less attack points than the one you just normal summoned. So you can climb the ladder from 1,900 all the way down to what's Orsha's 400 attack points. And you just add the particular combo piece that you need. So pretty much your entire deck becomes your hand with your Black Whirlwind as long as you can keep normal summoning. And it searches so much it searches so many cards especially when you can get three of them on the field they stack so like if i normal summon a blackwing monster i can search three blackwing monsters off of that one summon which is amazing so that's it for the spells guys um let's get into the traps for the traps we play two copies of blackbird close um i thought about playing this at three and maybe 
I mean, that's probably what you could drop for the Ash Blossom. If you don't want to play Ash Blossom, play another Blackbird Close and play Black Sonic if you want to. Um, and then play Vayu. Um, but the effect of Blackbird Close is when a monster um, your opponent controls activates its effect. You can send a face-up Blackwing monster you control to the graveyard and negate the activation if you do destroy it. Then you can special summon a Blackwing Dragon from your extra deck. Um, and if you control a Blackwing Synchro monster or Blackwing Dragon, you can activate this card from your hand. Which is an amazing speed spell 3 that just negates any monster effect, which is nuts. Um, I absolutely love this ability, and it's crazy good. So you want to play double... Um, Blackbird Close. I've really thought about playing it at three. So, for the extra deck, that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So, for the extra deck, we're going to play this one really, really sparkly, amazing looking Black Winged Dragon First Edition. Um, definitely give me a like for that one, guys. It's an awesome card. Um, two copies of Black Winged Full Armor Master. I feel like that you need the two of them because it's unaffected by card effects, and each time your opponent. Um, Control each time an opponent's monster activates its effect, you get to place a wedge counter on that monster, and then after this card resolves, once per turn, you get to target a monster your opponent controls with a wedge counter and take control of it. And then once per turn, during your end phase, you can destroy all monsters on the field that have wedge counters, which is just crazy that this card has four effects. Um, we play one copy of Chidori, the Rain Sprinkling. That was the one I was thinking of uh, earlier. Its effect is is that it gains 300 attack points for each Blackwing monster in your graveyard, which is amazing. Um, and then if it's destroyed by bat or destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you get to target a Wing Beast Synchro monster in your grave and revive it, which is just crazy cool. Um, then I play one copy of uh, Raikiri, the Rain Storm or the Rain Shower. Um, its effect is that for each Blackwing monster. Um, is on your field, you can destroy cards in your opponent's side of the field, which is amazing. Um, it's just a really good destruction card. I don't make it as much as I used to, but it's there if I need it. Um, two copies of Obsidian Hawk Joe to just revive all my other Blackwing monsters. If I can revive uh, level 5 or higher Wing Beast monsters from my graveyard once per turn, um, which is really amazing. Um, then I play one copy of Armor Master. Armor Master is just kind of here because... You can ha put him in defense position, and he can't be destroyed by battle. He's a good card to just summon, and your opponent's like, wow, I have Boral Sword. What am I going to do against that? And you can give the Boral Sword a wedge counter, and then yank the wedge counter off and reduce it to zero, and then swing into the Boral Sword and, and out it. Um, it does not out, um, what's it called, uh, Boral Load, but it outs Boral Sword, which is kind of funny, because Boral Sword can't be destroyed by battle, so you just give it a wedge counter, and you just keep poking it, which is funny. Um, then I play two copies of Nuthung. Um, Nothung gives me an additional normal summon and it burns my opponent for 800 points and it reduces an opponent's monster by 800 attack. I make this quite a lot. You can actually normal summon three times in a turn, which is kind of cool. Um, because what you do is, is you get Simo on field. Simo normal summons itself, which doesn't count as your normal summon. You get your additional normal summon, which is your first normal summon. And then you get Nothung summon, so you can normal summon three times and search three times off of your, uh, Black Whirlwind, which is really awesome. Um, one copy of Sin Haya, uh, the Rainstorm. Basically, this just revives a Blackwing monster on Summon that's an Assault Blackwing monster. So you can summon either your um, Raikiri or Chidori, which is really cool. Um, one copy of Raid Raptor Blade Burner Falcon. Drop this when the, when the Raid Raptor Link monster comes out. Play the Raid Raptor Link monster over this. Definitely. One copy of... Basically, this becomes 4,000 life points if you have 3,000 life points difference than your opponent. Um, if your opponent has higher than yours. Boral Sword, um, just as case, I can OTK. Yes, I'm proxying it. If you guys haven't checked out my proxy video, definitely check that out. It's on the main page of my channel. Um, how to make these. They're really easy to make and they're really beneficial to you guys if you're playtesting and stuff or you can't afford an $80 Boral Sword. Um, one copy of Nightmare Unicorn. Nightmare Unicorn just bounces stuff on the field and he gives us a decent link arrow. And one Wee Witch Apprentice. I make this so much. I make this all the time in this deck, um, just for the link arrows. Being able to summon all sorts of stuff. You can actually, if you want to, drop Unicorn and play another one of the Wee Witch Apprentice. It's really nice to have the link arrows because you can link away it and another uh, Blackwing monster and put it on the opposite side of your uh, field. Or you can just summon Boral Sword over there instead. I do that quite a lot where I'll end up with like two full armor masters, a Boral Sword, and like a Hawk Joe, 
in the first turn. It's really easy to end up with that board. So anyways, guys, this is Dark Arm Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think of this deck profile down in the comments down below. I absolutely love this deck. I don't know if you can tell by the energy I have in this video. Um, and if you guys have not seen my mail day, definitely check that out when I got this mat in the mail. So anyways, guys, this is Dark Arm Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell down there so you can become a part of the notification squad right there. And hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you around, guys.